Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Shelby. Welcome back to Seeds to Garden. I wanted to give you a realistic vlog today that not everything is wonderful every day here on the homestead. So the one thing it's good to keep in mind is although you may have a plan and a list of things to do, expect the unexpected. <laughs> um, so today we were supposed to be planting out the rest of our plants can see them all anxiously awaiting to go out but we ran into a little hiccup which changed all of our plans for today and I'll show you exactly what that hiccup is right here do you see all those little tiny white specks I don't know if the camera will focus, but they have legs. And that specifically is a parsley plant. They are on cabbage, cauliflower, artichoke, all of my herbs, celery, more herbs. Pretty bad. So, when we saw that today, changed our plans a little bit. But we're not entirely sure what mite it is, if it's a potting soil mite, or there are some different kinds of mites that live outside. It is some kind of mite, um, just not sure what kind. But either way, they are not good for plants. They're very detrimental, they live in the soil, and they can just keep infecting more and more plants. So you'll see, we individually look through them, and this side of the macadam is infected plants that had obvious infections. And this side of the macadam are plants that I did not see an infection, but were very close by to these plants. So what we did, we try and be as organic and pesticide free on this farm as possible, but there are issues that succumb to plants that just need a little TLC. So we have like a happy medium that we use on our homestead. It's called neem oil extract. And I don't know, this will probably show up backwards on the video. Neem oil extract. It's garden safe, organic, and it's a insecticide, fungicide, and a miticide. So it can kill certain things, but it can also just prevent other things, such as like potato bugs. It's more of a deterrent. They don't necessarily kill the potato bugs, it just kind of keeps them at bay. And on other things like insecticides and amidocide, those will actually kill those individual insects. So all of our seedlings got a douse of that. Anything we planted out recently also got a dose of that. We have been using it anyway on some of our raised beds because we had a potato bug infestation. So we've been trying to preemptively plan to kind of keep that at bay this year. So we had to spray all of the gardens. We sprayed all of the seedlings, but it even got to the point where we had to make sure that our entire downstairs was clean because that's where we've been keeping the plants. And if they're on the walls or on the floor or on any of the shelving that we use for those insects, they can just jump right back onto the plants. So that means that we pulled all of the shelf stands out, both of them. We hosed them off, sprayed them with neem oil. We hosed off all of our lights, sprayed those with neem oil. We took all of our extra seed containers and put them in tubs with Dawn dish soap, washed them all out. And we went to the soil that we've been using and we sprayed that as well just in case these are potting soil mites. So quite an adventure today so far. Um, it was not what I expected to be doing this, this morning. And now I'm a little hesitant to be planting any of these out, although we did neem oil everything out in the garden. These will probably wait another day or two to go out because I just want to make sure that all the bugs kind of vacate 
Um, I'm a little nervous taking them back in the house as well. So luckily, since I have them separated from each other, these I feel more comfortable bringing back in, which is good because these are the tomatoes and peppers that aren't really able to go out yet. And cucumbers, which are not frost tolerant, um, usually it needs to be a steady 50 degrees or higher or they will have a stunted growth issue. So I'm happy that the ones that absolutely needed to go in are not infected. The rest of the plants that are out here, I think are going to be fine if I just leave them out overnight for the next two or three days just to kind of make sure all the bugs disappear. But, you know, just one other thing that, you know, we weren't expecting to do today. But that is farming. That is homesteading. Expect the unexpected. That's kind of the motto for, for our homesteading. Yeah, planting's been delayed. And then we got all this done. It's about noon. We were going to start normal projects that we were planning on working on. And then we got a phone call from a friend that uh, he had a swarm of bees that he has no space for and is willing to give to us. And we've been looking to get a swarm for a few years now. Um, we've tried naturally catching them and there's just not many around this area and there's a lot of extra space for them to kind of go. So it's been hard to notice that there are any. But we do have a beehive, a horizontal beehive that's been kind of sitting and waiting in limbo. So of course we jumped at the chance and said, absolutely, we will take these bees. So again, expect the unexpected. Uh, my husband had to go out and grab these bees. So I'm stuck to kind of do what I can here while he's busy doing that. That is just a little bit of an update of what's been going on. You know, it is what it is. Everything is clean now. I'm feeling better about it. We're actually gonna take one of the plant stands down because we're hoping to have most of these plants kind of out now. We did clean up everything and it's, it's all good. It'll be fine. Um, but I'll give you more updates. Hopefully these guys have already seen them. They've been scurrying off. So I think they're definitely not happy that we got they got sprayed. So I think they'll vacate the plants really soon. So while I have you, I figure I will give you just a little bit more of updates. We have some cool things happening with our overwintered plants. So this is my blueberry bush that we overwintered. Um, it is a dwarf blueberry top hat. And so they're actually meant to be in uh, pots. So they don't get very big, but uh, I was looking for a blueberry to be able to add to the homestead a few years ago. But the one cool thing is super cool. So he started budding up, obviously. He looks very green and happy. But we just noticed we're getting our first set of flowers, which means we might actually get some blueberries off of him this year. We just want to add an acidifier to it along with a little bit of fertilizer to kind of bounce back the soil and give him some nutrients. And then this is the strawberry that I tried to overwinter in a pot. And he is looking okay. He's still green. So hopefully he bounces back too. Um, but my hope was to try and transplant this strawberry patch in a few different ways. So that has worked successfully. We had success with the uh, plant that we potted in or planted in a raised bed garden. And then we also had one that we took inside. And actually that was the one that did not do well. Out of all of the plants that we transplanted, I would have thought that the one that we took inside would have did the best, but it actually died. It did not do well. So maybe, you know, chalk that up to maybe the bad, a bad transplant or maybe the, just the conditions were not the best, but the pot outside that we overwintered and the transplant we did into the raised bed did the best. So I think I'll try those methods again this coming year because ultimately, like I said, this whole setup underneath our porch is disappearing. It's going to turn into a patio. So we want to get as many of those strawberries transplanted and happy in a new environment before we kind of take out that space. So that's what's happening right now. I'm probably going to go out and mow the grass and try to get a few odds and ends cleaned up since I'm not planting plants today. But I just wanted to kind of give you like an update of everything so that you kind of saw the real knit and grit of a homestead and how not everything is happy-go-lucky and sometimes issues happen and everybody can get pests and problems. We try and take care of them organically. We do our best to keep up with them and we'll keep you updated on how they're doing. But other than that, I will say that's it for this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.